Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. It's not a vlog. I'm just gonna be sitting down having a yarn. It's been a while, but I'm I'm really keen to make some content and what I really felt like making uh, was Well, I've been going through a Bible plan on the Bible app Which I'll leave a link to in the description below or wherever you're watching this if you're watching the podcast If you're watching the video if you're on the blog, you know go check out uh, the description below You can find out all the other ways you can watch this podcast if you prefer video audio or reading up to you go check it out uh, all the other versions, but anyway, in today's video, I've been going through a plan called Good Ideas versus God Ideas, and that's what we're going to run through. I'm just basically going to summarize it, put my personal life stories and experiences from a. I mean, I'm only 18, like, but like, I got some stories that I'm going to go through, um, the things that I've learned from this plan and how you can apply it to your life. So it's going to be super powerful. Thank you guys for checking out this video and let's get into old podcast. Forgot about that, huh? Got to set that up. But anyways, thank you for checking this out and let's head right into the message. So but I've got my notes over here, so try if I'm looking over here on the video. But you know, what this is about is basically when you make decisions and hearing from God and what you do about it sort of vibe, basically the... Uh, Bible verse that goes over this whole entire message and this whole uh, good ideas versus God ideas is one that most people already have. Proverbs 3, uh, 5 to 6 is to trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and always submit to Him and He will make your paths clear. Uh, we all know it. I mean, I have it on my wall probably. It's a pretty common uh, verse that we use, but the whole good idea versus God ideas is basically about trusting in God and not leaning on your understanding, but uh, just basically just going with it, putting all your trust in God. It's pretty simple, but it's actually super powerful. So anyway, uh, this Bible plan went over three key characteristics of God ideas, and basically we're going to be going over what God ideas are and how you can get more of them, and basically from God. That's basically what this is about. So the first God idea characteristic is God ideas will align with his word. So the idea behind this is God will not give you ideas that don't align with his word. Also pretty simple. But getting into that for maybe all you new Christians who haven't really read the Bible too much or don't really know much about him. Basically, where you're going to want to start is by either reading the Gospels. That's always, that's basically the four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. First four in the New Testament are all about the life of Jesus, pretty much, and what he did when he was alive and when he died and then when he was alive again because, you know, Jesus um, so read the Gospels. Also, there's this great resource that I love. It was a huge tool to me when I first became a Christian called The Bible Project. They make super, like, they basically look at patterns and themes behind the Bible and they analyze it. And it's actually super interesting. You learn a lot. It's not stuff that you sort of just realize by reading the Bible face value. So whether you're a new Christian or you um been a Christian for ages, go check out The Bible Project. You can learn so much about God's Word and what he's doing, and so it's just super interesting, go check it out, but also Jesus said the two most important commandments were to love God and to love people, basically if you have an idea and uh, one doesn't glorify God or doesn't glorify other people, it's not a God idea, right, that's basically the whole principle of um, the New Testament, and obviously accepting Jesus as your Lord and all that sort of salvation stuff. But being a Christian is all about loving people and loving God. So if you have an idea to do something new, um, if it involves not glorifying God, or not glorifying people, it's not a God idea. Even if it's a good idea from this worldly perspective, it's not a God idea. And so that's not what we're really looking for here. And to build on that, glorifying God comes before um, any sort of measure that you can do. This is hard if you're in like a public company and you have like um, a board or like shareholders to present um, like profit margins and all that sort of stuff. Well, not profit margins, but profit reports and income statements and all that. It's going to be hard to do, but being a private company or being a private business that I own, Glorifying God become, uh, comes more important and comes first compared to profit or anything. For example, um, I print all my own shirts here and like on my own. And if I screw something up, I'm not going to hand it to a customer. Or if it's a little bit wrong, I'm just going to chuck it in the waste, which I'm then going to go and donate to um, charities. But I'm never going to hand out people a product that's not quality because it's not glorifying them. They gave me their money and in exchange I'm going to give them a good product. So even if it means I've pretty much lost money on like a lot of orders that I've already sent out. But if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be glorifying, uh, glorifying other people and therefore not glorifying God. So that's what Son of Manscapes is all about. That's what I put first. Even if it means losing money, I'm always going to um, glorify God and glorify other people. 
And so to wrap up the point of God ideas will um, align with his word. Basically, if you're not sure about something, you can actually just search it, like literally like Google search it and whatever it is based on like in the Bible, or you can go on the Bible app and search an idea or search something and it'll come up with a whole bunch of scriptures based on that idea. It's super powerful. So just search God's word and that will at least give you a sign of whether that is a, a God idea or just maybe just a good idea. Okay, so going into God idea char oh my gosh, going into God idea characteristic number two is basically God ideas are often bigger than what you're capable of doing on your own. This is the crazy thing about God. Um, he he'll often align his ideas with what you're good at, which basically because of the gifts he's already given you, uh, things you're passionate about, things you like, um, and basically ideas that will force you to rely on God, which is crazy, and it's something that I've really set out for myself to do this year, at the beginning of the year at Summer Camp, we were talking about what we wanted to do this year, and I said I want to put myself in positions to rely on God more, and that's basically relying on his ideas, on his word, and all that sort of stuff, so it's been a crazy year so far, but just put yourself in a position where you can rely on God. Now part of that comes with me starting my own clothing brand, which has been absolutely crazy, um, I basically I was making I purchased of a heat press to print some of the clothes and it was a lot of money and you know to give you an idea I study full-time and work part-time at McDonald's right so I don't I'm not just rolling in money and it was a solid amount of money to buy this heat press so I want to buy I don't want to buy one that's going to break straight away and I had to spend even more money in the future so I want to get like a decent one not not a stupidly expensive one but like a decent one and bro I was scared buying it like putting my credit information credit card information I'm like dang I'm actually doing this so, man, I decided to pray before. I'm like, God, like, this is crazy, but I believe your hand is over this. So I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to put myself in a position to rely on you. And so as I was praying, I believe God told me um, that he was going to use his clothing company or this clothing brand to not just necessarily make me rich, because that's not what this is really about. But what it is about is he said, just as Jesus fed um, the 5,000 people, I was going to be able to donate 5,000 clothes and clothe 5,000 people. And he was going to be a part of it and he was going to bless me and he was going to be able to use this clothing brand as a tool to be able to do charitable work like that. So that's what I'm really believing for. It's a huge task, 5,000 t-shirts. To give you an idea, oh, I'm currently like changing between, I'm still trying out some different t-shirts that I like. Basically, the expensive ones, I used to be able to get them for cheaper, but then supply issues and all that sort of fun business stuff happened. So it cost me like 20 bucks just to get a blank t-shirt. But that's like the real, like, bro, I've got them right here, man. They are like super soft, super comfortable. Um, they cost me like 20 bucks times like 5,000 is what? 10 times 5,000 would be 50. That's $100,000, man. Like, it's, cr it's stupid. Like, I don't understand how it's going to happen, but I'm relying on God. It's a God idea. It's not, a, this is a perfect example of a God idea if it's a good idea. This is not a good idea. Like, this is not going to happen. But God's put it in my heart. I'm believing for it, and it's a God idea, and I'm going all out for it. So, there you go. That's a God idea if it's a good idea. Now, moving on from relying from or relying on God, we're going to God idea characteristic number three, which are God ideas will often defy common sense, logic, or any previous experiences. And this is what makes it hard. This is what, this is, like, you know what I'm talking about as a Christian. God will put something in your heart, and it's like, God, what the actual heck? Like, this, this ain't going to work. But then it happens, and it's amazing, and God's moving, and that's what a God idea is all about. For example, there's a story in the Old Testament about the king of Judah, uh, Jehoshaphat, which I'm just going to read. I, I don't know if it's top of my head, so bear with me. Um, so basically, Jehoshaphat found out about an invasion of Judah, his first response uh, was to seek God, not just for a good idea, but for a God idea. God told Jehoshaphat uh, that the battle was his and Jehoshaphat's army would not need to fight. Jehoshaphat sent out a choir in front of the army worshipping God. When the, when the enemy army heard the choir, they spanned into confusion and began to kill each other. This idea was not a good idea by whatsoever, but it was a God idea. Jehoshaphat went to God, asked for ideas, uh, he prayed to him, and that's what God put in his heart. It's not a good idea, it defies all previous experiences, it defies common sense, it defies logic, but God put it in his heart. Jehoshaphat was faithful, uh, did what God said, and that's what happened.
And so to recap the three characteristics of God ideas is one, that they'll align with his word. Two, they are bigger than what uh, you are capable of doing on your own. Three, they defy common sense and all logic and all that sort of stuff. But basically, how can you get these? Because obviously they're amazing. When God something puts on your heart is super powerful. Um, and so basically, how can you get these? Well, God ideas are revealed through one, prayer, through worship, uh, and even through other people. God can put ideas uh, to other people for them to give to you. It's crazy how it works. It happens in the Bible, which you can read about. It happens in real life. I've seen it before. Um, but basically, just ask God for ideas. The important thing to do is to spend time with God, uh, build a relationship with Him. It's super powerful. The more you know God, the more you spend time with Him, the more you pray, the more you worship. Um, you basically become more sensitive to what he's saying and you can really understand it you can tell what is God and what isn't God and so I just really encourage you to spend more time with him praying with him uh, worshiping to him is super powerful it's going to change your life and if you could do one uh, thing for this over, over this next week just spend more time with God it's super powerful at church we're currently going through 21 days of prayer and fasting and honestly in the first what like two, three days, my life's already changed. I'm not even exaggerating. I'm not going to go into detail now, but literally spending time with God is super powerful. So spend more time with Him. Uh, stay blessed. And I'll see you guys next week with another video. Peace out.